And welcome back to WMMBAM.com. Keyword video gets you here as we conduct our post Bill Mick live interviews of our political candidates in this primary season. Today, we've got the Canaveral Port Authority District 2 job in play. The incumbent, Joe D. Matheny, did not reply to my request for an interview, did not bother to show up and participate on the air. So, therefore, no surprise he's not here as we talk to his opponent, one and done seat, Mr. Matheny, is uh, John Hank Evans. Hank, thank you for taking the time well, and being here today. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it very much. Uh, a lot of folks don't necessarily know about things going on at the port unless something big hits in the news like the parking issue did over the last couple of weeks. Not a lot in play about news at the port other than this is opening, that's closing, here's a job, here's a cruise ship, here's you know, it, it's basic information. What are the biggest issues that face the port authority as you see it as you run for this job? I think the biggest issues, first of all, is to keep the cruise business where it is or enlarge it. It generates millions and millions of dollars for the port every year, and we need to make sure that those customers and those boat owners are satisfied with the port conditions. Uh, I think we need to have top uh, facilities for the loading and unloading of passengers, which ties into the parking. The parking needs to be convenient and relatively inexpensive for the passengers. Port Canaveral cannot be Miami. We cannot be the most expensive port in the state of Florida. We need to be competitive so that we can increase the tourism industry. All right, very good. Um, what do you believe the solutions are to the issues that the port faces right now? I think the issues are communication and respect of each side for the other side. I think that the parking issue came to pass because the port authority uh, staff did not have the appropriate respect for the hotel owners and the off-site park, parking people. And I think that, again, I would personally recommend that the port authority staff and the uh, Cocoa Beach Hotel Association get together, have a session where they discuss each other's problems, concerns, rights, uh, and then we'll come up with a reasonable solution. Uh, one of them which has been suggested is to lower the uh, parking rate at the port. $15 is a lot of money on an eight-day cruise. That's nearly 100 bucks. Uh, and if I was going to charge 100 bucks to park, I'd go off-site parking and park for $5 a day instead myself. Mm -hmm. So the, the parking needs to be competitive or have something special that justifies going on site to park at the port. Are the regulations that the port put in play and then rescinded uh, in large part, they're still not issuing any additional permits, but were those regulations and fees they put in play government unfairly competing with private enterprise? Yes, I think it clearly was government uh, enacting its uh, monopolistic powers, which in fact would have crushed and put out of business lots of small businessmen in the Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral, and Merritt Island area. Uh, I think that they did not really have concerns for those community uh, businesses, which they need to have. Those hotel businesses, there's 14 of them in Cape Canaveral and Cocoa Beach, uh, employ a lot of people and hire a lot of guests and have the guests stay in our area and spend a lot of dollars. So they're very important businesses just like the port is, and they need to be looked at and they need to be cared for also as well as the port. Uh, Todd Oakey, one of the parking lot co-owners, uh, off-site parking lot co-owners, was here on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he'd indicated that the port, either through its CEO or through one of the Port Authority members, had said that those customers that are coming in and out of the port weren't the port's customers, they were the cruise line's customers. Is there a flaw in thinking there? Well, I think the only flaw is you can't label any customer one side or the other. Uh, Disney transports a lot of customers from Orlando mm -hmm. by bus to the port where there's no parking or off-site parking issues involved whatsoever. So, yes, there are a substantial number of passengers. Is Disney having to pay the same fee to get their people in? No, of course not. Really? Of course not. How unfair is that? Well, Disney's uh, the king. And Disney gets what it wants. We must all bow to the mouse, huh? Yep. Um I want to see that issue corrected. In large part, it has been. Do you agree with the moratorium on more off-site parking permits, or is that really within the purview of, of, of the port at all? If I want to open up a business next to Todd Oakey's business and try to compete with him, isn't that on my shoulders, really? I, I think the moratorium on a short-term basis was appropriate because, you know, once this became such a hot issue, it was very possible that other people would have rushed in and created more parking than is really justifiable under an economic basis. So I think on a short term, the moratoriums are right. I expect to see the moratorium lifted within a month or two uh, once they get the parking issues worked out between the hoteliers and the off-site parking people and the port staff. Do you have faith that they're going to do that and do it well? Yes, 
Absolutely. That's good to hear. Last question I have for you is, given the bigger issues that we've talked about and what those solutions may be, what in your skill set allows you to fit that bill and, and actually perform these duties as a port commissioner? I have been a business attorney for nearly 40 years. I think that skill set in itself tells you a lot. Uh, I'm not shy. Uh, I don't back down to staff. And I think that's another skill set that needs to be. I think that some of the commissioners have become lap dogs for staff, and just whatever staff says, that's what they want to do. Uh, I'll stand up and analyze the issues both sides because, as I said, there's two sides to every story, and sometimes staff is right. They're not always wrong. And uh, I think that I'll give it the critical eye that needs to happen to make sure the port stays on uh, track to be such a nice, viable economic industry. And as folks in uh, Port Authority District 2 want to get in contact with you or have more questions, get involved with your own campaign, what's the best way they can reach you? Uh, probably my webpage, and it's votehankevans.com. And it uh, has my stands on other issues, uh, ways to contact me, my email address, my phone address, my street address, and everything like that. Hank Evans, thanks much for your time. I appreciate you being in here today. It was a good hour on radio and a good 10 minutes or so here. I appreciate it. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Keyword video here at WMMBAM.com. More campaign interviews throughout the season running us up to that August 14th primary. Keep it right here, WMMBAM.com. We'll see you next time.